Welkom bij Value Jagers Podcast. De podcast over beleggen en goedkope aandelen. Hi everyone and welcome to a new podcast for Value Jagers. My name is Tim van Horenbeke and I'm your host. Uh, and I have to say that I'm quite excited today because uh, I invited two special guests. Uh, my first guest is, of course, our own uh, crypto specialist and analyst at Value Jagers, Ronald Hendricks. Hi, Ronald, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, okay. uh, dear viewers and listeners, uh, I would pay good attention because we will release one of the stock picks from our crypto value for life portfolio. Uh, so moving on to our second uh, special guest and uh, Whom, whom it's actually all about in this podcast today. I'd like to start off with a big and warm welcome to Mr. Mark Bins. Hi, Mark, and thank you so much for uh, accepting our invitation to this interview. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for uh, having me. Excited to be here to speak with you guys today about big digital assets and all the exciting stuff we're doing. Uh, perhaps a very brief uh, introduction. Uh, Mark is CEO of Big Digital Assets, and he has over 20 years of experience uh, building customer-driven sales and marketing strategies. He also founded, built, and sold two consulting companies that provided strategic advice on customer acquisition and revenue growth to Fortune 1000 technology companies, including RIM, Cisco, and Rogers. Now, of course, we're here to talk about big digital assets. So, uh, Mark, uh, could you please briefly tell us all about big digital assets? Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Big Digital Assets is a crypto company. We call it Compliance First Crypto. Um, we uh, invest in businesses, crypto businesses specifically, that we think can take advantage of a future of crypto where it's going to be a regulated environment uh, and a compliant and safe uh, environment for everybody financially. And the two businesses that we actually own and operate are called Netcoins and Blockchain Intelligence Group. So these two operating businesses together make up Big Digital Assets. Uh, we trade in Canada on the CSC under ticker BIGG. We trade in the States under BBKCF. Um, the two businesses, I'll tell you a little about them. Netcoins is a crypto brokerage business. So we sell uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, USDC, uh, all the major crypto coins to our customer base, whether they're retail buyers or institutional buyers. And that business operates in Canada and is now the first uh, government licensed uh, crypto trading platform in Canada owned by a public company. Uh, we'll talk a bit about that as we go. It's a big, exciting catalyst. It opens up a lot of opportunity for us. And our other business, Blockchain Intelligence Group, it used, makes software that tracks the movement of crypto through the blockchain. So anytime there's crime involved where crypto, uh, crypto becomes a part of it, uh, you can use our technology, namely the software is called Clue. And it will watch the movement of crypto through the blockchain, through wallets and addresses. And law enforcement uses this technology, whether it's to deal with crypto theft or money laundering or weapons purchases, drug purchases, anything that goes wrong in the world where crime, uh, crypto meets crime, I guess you'd say. Um, our customers can log into Clue and figure out what's going on for their investigations. Our customer base ranges from small police departments to large uh, city police departments like the Hong Kong Police Department all the way up. So the U.S. Secret Service uses Clue technology to track the movement of crypto to stop crime on a global basis. And those are those are the two businesses that make up big digital assets. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think, Ronald, that we can uh, go forward to the, the questioning. Yes. Um, yeah, first of all, uh, congratulations on the, the license for, for Netcoins. Um, What is the, the, the big advantage uh, from this license and why is it so important? Yeah, thanks. It's, it's an exciting accomplishment. We first called the uh, BC Securities Commission around 2018 and we said, listen, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of fraud in the industry. There's exchanges that are going under. Everyone's heard of Quadriga, which was you know, a large crypto exchange fraud or scam where the founder may or may not have died in India. Um, either way, $250 million dollars of investor money was lost. And, and we said, listen, we're running a, a, a nice, uh, safe, legit crypto brokerage business with Netcoins, and we're owned by a public company. We're already being audited uh, on an annual basis, and uh, we have proper storage for coins, proper banking. And you know, we said to them, we'd like a license. We'd like essentially the government uh, to endorse the fact that this is a legit platform. And uh, the regulator said, yes, we'd like to do that too, but um, we have to figure out how we're going to do that because all of our regulations are set for stock brokerages, not crypto brokerages. So it took some time. Um, it took uh, a lot of time doing 
presentations and showing them our technology. Uh, but fast forward nearly three years, and at the end of September, we received this license. It's actually a restricted dealer license for a crypto trading platform. And the only thing restricted about it is we can only sell crypto assets. We're not going to be selling Apple stock and, and traditional stocks, of course, on the platform. Um, the big deal is, is multifold. So first of all, it's great for exposure and credibility for the Netcoins brand. Um, you know, we're getting written up in uh, national newspapers and magazines and trade journals and stuff talking about how regulation is coming to crypto and that Netcoins is a leader in the space. So we're getting our name out there and it's attracting customers to our platform. They want to trade on a safe, regulated platform. Um, it's also opening up advertising channels to us. So as you attempt to educate uh, buyers about Netcoins and that they can get crypto on Netcoins, We've been blocked in a lot of places, national TV networks, digital channels, uh, news networks that wouldn't run our ads because we weren't licensed. And we always said, well, nobody's licensed. And the, their response was, well, when you get a license, give us a call. Um, now we have a license and we can actually advertise on a bunch of these national channels, uh, which is great for getting our message out. But our competitors that aren't licensed can't. So it's a unique advantage from an exposure point of view and bringing people to Netcoins for growing the platform. Um, it's also causing the market from a competitive point of view to shrink. So there's a number of competitors in the market to Netcoins, whether they're international players like the Binances of the world um, that aren't going to get Canadian regulation. They're not set up the way they do KYC um, and their systems aren't set up in a way that Canadian regulators would accept. So they've been asked to leave the market and not accept customers here. And on the smaller end of the scale, there's lots of small players in the Canadian market that won't get through regulation because they don't have uh, the cash, the bankroll to deal with uh, the regulators, like hiring lawyers, going through the process, doing applications, doing reporting. A lot of those will probably shut down. And what you're going to see over the coming months is the Canadian market will consolidate. There'll be a handful of regulated players left. And the rest of the players that are providing this service, this crypto brokerage business will leave. That gives Netcoins a very significant uh, competitive advantage because we get to split up the pie with a smaller number of competitors. At the same time, the market itself is growing. More consumers are entering the market. More institutions are entering the market for buying and selling crypto every day. Um, and that allows us to be, again, one of a smaller set of competitors for a growing pie. The last thing it enables, which is exciting, is what I call platform as a service. So with this license, we can go become the trading engine for crypto for any number of financial institutions. So think about credit unions, mid-tier banks, uh, companies that run digital wallets, credit card companies, etc. cetera. Um, none of them have a license to trade crypto, but many of them would like to be able to offer crypto trading to their customers now. Uh, because there is licensing, it's becoming mainstream and they'd like to make a revenue stream from that. So Netcoins could plug into the online banking, for example, for a mid-tier bank. And those customers of that bank would see, you know, checking account, savings account, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and they'd be able to trade back and forth between fiat and crypto. And on the back end, that would be run by Netcoins. And that platform as a service would bring us a revenue stream from that bank. Um, and all of those customers that that bank already has can be plugged into our system and we can be having them essentially trade on our platform. And because we have a license, these third party financial institutions will not need one and they will want to do business with us. Um, so it's exciting. There's a whole bunch opened up by this license and, you know, we'll just continue to grow on our ever growing platform anyway. But uh, that's the big deal about the license. Okay, sounds great. Um... Did you see already uh, acceleration for the demand since the license was uh, agreed? Yeah, we've already seen um, lots of customers come in through new ads that we've been running uh, tied to licensing. So we've had some national full page ads in Globe Mail, National Post, Toronto Star talking about, you know, Netcoins being a regulated license place. And uh, we see customer signups coming from that. And we do surveys on customer adoption and and they, you know, come in through those advertising channels on, on that messaging. So it, it's nice to see. It's very early days. We're only a couple of weeks into this. Um, it's more about what it enables going forward, but we already see early signs of adoption because of it. Okay. And uh, maybe because uh, you're always looking for, for opportunities in the market, uh, are you going to um, take over other platforms that don't get the license or do you think they will just go away and customers will come organically? 
Yeah, great question. We're going to look at them all on a case by case basis. I've already had um, a couple of different smaller exchanges come to me and say, hey, would you be interested in acquiring us? Um, there's nothing that I've seen that's particularly attractive yet because as those exchanges go away, those customers, you know, become available on the market. And if we're the option uh, that is regulated, safe, compliant, and has a good service and a good price, um, they'll naturally sign up for NetCoins anyway, and we won't have to acquire the customer base. Um, so it'll be a consideration of what is their technology? Do they have a platform that's unique and different from NetCoins that we can leverage? Um, and who are their customers? And, you know, how can they be acquired through marketing versus paying to acquire them? And of course, it would come down to price. So we'll look at it for sure. We'll keep our eye on the market. Uh, nothing to date uh, to report, but um, there may be opportunities for sure. And uh, are you also looking at the United States for a uh, license or to be regulated? Or? We're looking at the United States for launch. So the, the regulation framework in the US is totally different. Um, it's state by state. Some states have no regulations that cover crypto all the way up to New York that has a bit license, which is very onerous. And then in between, some states have crypto specific licensing. Some just have what they call money transmission licensing, which crypto falls under if you're moving money back and forth between customers uh, for financial reasons. Um, so we have actually engaged a law firm. Uh, we're looking at the states and deciding which states we'd want to launch in. And we're hoping to do that by end of this year, or early next year, and, and bring NetCoins to the US. Okay. That's a promising future for, for NetCoins. Um, for sure. Yeah. I mean, in the US is a 10x market of Canada. Um, yeah. We're well positioned. Uh, you no, know, Big Digital Assets has over $75 million in cash and crypto. We have over 430 Bitcoins of our own uh in treasury so we're very well funded and in a great position to take advantage of, of the market yeah that's one of the things that uh, stood by me that you also have uh bitcoins on the balance sheet um there are more and more companies doing that uh but big digital was i think one of the the first to be to have a, a great amount of uh, bitcoin on the balance sheet uh, are you looking to expand the the number of bitcoins We'll probably continue to slowly expand, even if just because NetCoins maintains a Bitcoin float. So as our business grows, uh, we continue to maintain our own float for operations to make sure we can settle trades quickly with customers. Uh, there's no delays uh, before we top up with liquidity providers. Um, so we've been continuously slowly adding, and, and I think we will continue to do that as well. Um, so you know, we're firm believers that Bitcoin sitting at you know, I see 63,000 U.S. right now. Um, I think it can be 100,000 U.S. by early next year. And we've been buying Bitcoin um, on the balance sheet since five, six, seven thousand U.S. And it's been extremely good to us. Um, but, you know, we believe this is just uh, mid stage in the evolution. I said on a lot of interviews, third, third inning of a nine inning game in, in uh, crypto overall. Um, so we will continue to slowly accumulate uh, Bitcoin on the balance sheet. Value for life. Levenslang beleggen in ondergewaardeerde aandelen. U betaalt één keer een activatie en ontvangt continu tips en updates voor altijd. Ontdek Value for Life via valuejagers.com slash value-for-life. And maybe also uh, other cryptocurrencies like uh, Ethereum or maybe DeFi tokens. We own some of those. Um, and again, it's for liquidity mainly on uh, the Netcoins platform. Um, I think so far, corporately, we've taken a real approach that everything follows Bitcoin in terms of value. Bitcoin goes up, the altcoins go up, Bitcoin goes down, those coins go down. Uh, we're very comfortable in Bitcoin with its you know, limited supply, high institutional ownership across ETFs now. Um, and that's, that's where the primary ownership of crypto for us will come outside of what we need to operate floats. Okay. And what do you personally think about the evolution of the Bitcoin ETF? The first one will launch today, but it's a futures ETF. So, Yeah, I think it's great for the market overall. Um, I mean, it's really good to see any time institutions are getting involved. Um, the Bitcoin ETF will have to buy Bitcoin and hold it, of course, as part of the ETF, which will drive up the price naturally just from the acquisition of coins. Also creates some excitement and momentum in the market. Um, and the more excitement in the market, the more companies get involved, the more innovation happens. Um, overall, the more use of crypto globally will continue to be driven because of things like this. So uh, it's positive for the market all around. 
Okay, and uh, a few questions about uh, blockchain intelligence group. That's uh, the other part of uh, big digital assets. Um, you talked about it in the, about the introduction. It's like um, highway patrol on uh, on the blockchain. Um, how is that uh, evolving? Uh, how is that growing? Because when I look at the at the numbers, at the quarterly results, um, the revenue from this part is way less than uh, net coins. Yeah. So that side of the business is uh, driven. The values there is driven by technology primarily so far. Uh, Netcoins is the bigger cash maker and revenue maker in the business. But Clue, um, you know, our highway patrolman, as you say, on the crypto highway is uh, incredibly valuable technology. There's about three and a half billion uh, attributions inside of Clue. And those are essentially labels that make the blockchain go from being anonymous to uh, de-anonymizing the blockchain. So law enforcement can look at it and say, oh, your, your coins were stolen. They went through these 50 wallets. They went around the world three times and they ended up in this wallet. And our data can tell you uh, that that wallet is inside a Coinbase and it's a Coinbase hot wallet. And then a police officer could call up Coinbase and give them a subpoena and say, freeze the coins in that wallet. We're doing an investigation. Clue can be used in court to show with factual evidence where the coins went, how they got there. And, um, you know, they can do a prosecution. Uh, our job is not to be police officers. Our job is to provide the best tech possible for law enforcement globally to do their job. And with Clue, again, across seven or eight blockchains that we have, and we continuously add blockchains into the technology, I should say. Um, so as crime involves more and more different crypto types, it can be investigated. Um, but the real value there is taking a huge data set, collecting it, and then showing it through a graphing engine in a very easy to use interface. So picture a police officer who knows very little about crypto, but understands crime investigation can use our tool to figure out what's going on and, and try to solve a crime. Um, recent competitors in the market have received valuations. Chainalysis, their last raise was a $4 billion pre-money valuation. Uh, and CypherTrace was just bought by MasterCard. Uh, probably about two weeks ago. And we believe the value of that transaction was somewhere between 250 and $500 million. And what we have in Clue is every bit as good as what CypherTrace sold to MasterCard in terms of technology, in terms of capability, data sets. Um, so we keep building that product. Revenue stream will rise as use of crypto becomes more part of payment versus investment. Um, and that technology will drive revenue that way. But regardless, the value of it uh, if someone were to come along like a Visa or an Amex and also want to buy their own technology is very significant. It could be as high as the entire uh, market cap of big digital assets itself. Okay, because um, when I looked at the company, I also found that uh, blockchain intelligence um, is only one of four or five companies that can do what, uh, what you do, uh, be the, the highway patrol police. Um, but isn't this going to be a market where the, the big guys take it all and, and, and Clue maybe left uh, on the side? No, I mean, we are one of the big guys in this market, right? So the, so you got CypherTrace, as I said, just got purchased. You got Chainalysis, you got Clue, you got Elliptic. Um, the interesting thing to see is, again, super high barriers to entry. It took us five or six years to collect uh, all the data and we continuously collecting the data on the blockchain, three and a half billion data points. Um, there's only, you know, again, with $25 million, five or six years of development into the product, all this data, a company can't just start up and enter this space. Um, so there's a big moat around it and there's really only four competitors and one of them just got bought by MasterCard. So those of us that are still there, I love our odds uh, competing uh, in this space together and, and splitting up the revenue. Um, but there's also a complete possibility that one of the other large, you talk about large competitors, big banks, uh, big crypto companies, uh, master like the visas of the world, they might want to buy this technology because it's very hard to build. Um, so that's where I think a lot of significant values can be created regardless, um, just with the tech itself. Okay. Uh, great. And um, oh, just a few questions about uh, some investments that you made. Uh, I'm looking up uh, what did you so you bought a 200k uh, investment in Zen Ledger. Um, you are part of uh, uh, the capital of uh, Wonderfy and also so another few uh, companies you invested in. 
Um, how do you see this uh, in the big picture of uh, big digital assets? Yeah, so there's just two. So you and you got them. We invested in Zen Ledger and we invested in Wonderfy outside of our own companies. Okay. Um, those are really interesting companies with great leadership, uh, quite early stage companies with really good investor groups. Um, you know, we invested in Wonderfy, we started investing them at 25 cents seed round. CEO is Ben Samaru. Uh, you know, great, exciting company. You're going to tap into the DeFi space. Uh, we're already up about eight or nine X on our first investment in that company. So you know, what we saw, what was going to happen was, is coming true. So that's a great investment and a good team. Um, they also brought in uh, investors like uh, other blockchain or crypto miners like Argo. And then Kevin O'Leary, who's a bit of a celebrity investor in the financial world. And for us, it gives us access to all of those people that Wonderfy has as investors. One phone call away, um, we can talk to them, we can uh, get access to their groups of investors and exposure to their media contacts, et cetera. So one of the values is, is the co-investors in those companies for sure. Uh, Zen Ledger, same thing, crypto tax company, great CEO, software as a service business. We think crypto tax is going to continue to become more and more important. Again, as more mainstream people invest in it and need to report on tax. Um, and Mark Cuban is one of the big investors in that company. So, you know, we're one phone call away from Mark Cuban and his network of, of money and investors. Um, so that's another reason we like being in those companies is that it gives us a really good exposure to a broad number of, uh, you know, big heavyweights playing in the crypto space. Okay, uh, I have, uh, I think, uh, one more question. Maybe Tim uh, also has some questions. I don't know. Um, but where do you see uh, crypto in about five years and where do you see uh, big digital assets in the same period about uh, five years from now? It's amazing when people talk about five years because five years in crypto is an absolute eternity. Uh, you know, Bitcoin's just uh, not long ago, it feels like it was a 10 year anniversary. So it's, it's a long period of time. But what I think is going to happen is that crypto in five years is going to be completely part of the mainstream economy. Uh, people are going to be buying and selling stuff with Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, whatever the case might be, just exactly the same as they're doing right now with Canadian dollars, US dollars, British pounds. Uh, you're going to see uh, banking is completely integrated with crypto. Uh, people are going to be uh, thinking about whether they're going to do a, a loan through uh, you know, a DeFi token, potentially, just as they're going to do uh, right now, walk into their, their bank and get a loan for their house. I can see uh, collateralization and tokenization of everything, uh, you know, from houses to apartment buildings to corporations uh, will probably be tokenized and traded on exchanges, just like we trade traditional stocks now. Um, you know, across that time frame, it's going to be amazing to see. I think the value of Bitcoin, uh, I wouldn't even want to hazard a guess, uh, well over a million dollars a coin easily inside of that time frame. Um, and big is going to continue to be a major part of that. I mean, we will be a global organization even more than we are now today, both on the crypto trading side, crypto forensics. And, you know, again, over five years, I got to believe we're going to be into a whole bunch more businesses um, that, that are emerging right now and ones that we haven't even seen yet, um, again, tied to crypto. So uh, we're in the flow. We're watching what's happening. That's partially why we take these minority investments to keep our ear to the ground of what's happening in new and unique spaces in crypto. And uh, it's going to be a great five years. I don't think the financial system in five years from now is going to look really anything like it does right now. Okay, looking forward to it. Me too. <laughs> okay. Do you have uh, any more questions, Tim? Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, Mark, because you said that you invested also in in uh, Wonderfy. Uh, what's what's the the share percentage that you own from uh, from from them? Uh, it's very small. Uh, okay. We are a very minority investor in that play. So if we were a majority investor, we'd have to, you know, report and and, and merge in their yeah. financials, etc. So um, it was a minority position, similar to like we took in Zen Ledger. But it paid off eventually <laughs> paid off it paid off extremely well i mean again it's up eight or nine x from our first investment um so it's been nothing but positive okay uh maybe another question uh how do you plan to conquer also the european markets because i can imagine first canadian and, and us but what are the plans for europe yeah we've been looking at europe uh we did a bit of a study to see which uh countries are leading in regulation and where a bit of our canadian framework could fit into the european market 
Um, we love to bring net coins to Europe. Um, it, it's a matter of focus and time and energy with the Canadian market and our license and growth here. And then also the US, are, you know, just a massive market there. Um, so I do believe we'll eventually get net coins into the European market. Um, Blockchain Intelligence Group already sells into the European market. Uh, Clue has already sold into European customer bases. So across big digital assets, we're already halfway there. Um, and, you know, I'd like to be there as soon as possible with Netcoins, but it's, again, it's a matter of uh, focusing and, you know, not trying to do too much at once, um, but we'll get there as soon as we can. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, if Ronald, I don't know if you still have some questions or not. Okay. Then I think we've uh, reached the end of, of this podcast. So thank you very much to uh, Ronald and Mark for joining me today. And uh, to our viewers and listeners, I hope you enjoyed this interview. If you do, please hit the like button. And if you're interested at uh, investing in big digital assets, or if you want to read more about them, you can always visit their webpage, bigdigitalassets.com, big written with double G. Uh, we at Value Agris will, of course, also continue uh, to keep following them. Uh, so if you want to receive their latest updates or news, uh, subscribe to our Crypto Value for Life report and make sure that you won't have to miss out on any of these updates or any other new stock picks for that matter in the near future. Because as you know, things can evolve really fast in crypto. Uh, and for sure, you don't want to miss out on any of the opportunities. Uh, thank you all for watching and listening and until the next podcast. Bye. Value Jagers podcast. Te beluisteren via de drie grootste podcastplatformen ter wereld. YouTube, Spotify en iTunes. En vergeet niet om onze gratis aandelentip te downloaden via valuejagers.com slash podcast. Het is een spotgoedkoop aandeel dat steeds populairder wordt dankzij de sterk groeiende podcastindustrie.